If you're looking for a value add income property in a really good area, then you want to check out this video and learn a little bit more about this property and uh, the area and what you what you may be able to get uh, in an area like this, what types of properties. Um, so we're going to start off. This is located in Lomita and it's a three unit investment property. Um, and so we're going to go through this video today. I'm going to go through a little bit about the property. We're going to run through um, the area, look at a map, kind of see where it's located, you know, the greater area that it's in. Um, and I'm going to run through a bit of an analysis and show you what some of the numbers might look like, what, what they look like now, what the potential is for something like this. Um, so this is a value add opportunity. Um, so with that, you know, it's their rents need to be raised and maybe some work done on the property, things like that. There's different types of properties you can get. You can just buy something that's already done, ready to go, and you get a return and you put the money down. There's not a lot you can really add to it, add to the value other than just normal appreciation. Um, there's some other things you can do um, with properties, which we can talk about more in another video um, to add value, even if you know there's nothing really to fix up. There's things you can add on and there's ways you can can benefit tax wise. So, um, but for this property specifically, this one, we're gonna shift over, take a look at the map and see where it's located. So this one is in Lomita, which if you map here, we've got the greater South Bay part of Los Angeles along the, the coast here. Um, South Bay is this whole area between LAX, which is up here and Long Beach over here. So on the South Bay, we've got the beach cities of Manhattan Beach, Redondo Beach, Palos Verdes, Hermosa Beach. Torrance is a big part of that. I've got another property or another video I did on Torrance. If you want to go check that one out and definitely stay around to the end of this one because I'm going to be giving doing a giveaway. Um, it, it won't be exactly at the end. Um, it'll be mixed somewhere in, in the middle so that way you can can catch all of the video. So let's zoom in a little bit and see where Lomita is. Lomita is located right in here between Torrance and San Pedro and Palos Verdes. It's kind of a hidden little gem. Really. So here's Lomita. Um, you got it goes up, oops, goes about here on the south and then you go up on the north until you hit Torrance. Um, it goes to just about western uh, on the east and uh, around Crenshaw on the west. So those are the general boundaries. And there's different parts of Lomita, which we can dig into. This one's kind of more in central, uh, central Lomita. All right, so touch back over here on the listing, look at it a little bit. So you can see this one is um, five bedrooms. So we've got a three bedroom and two one bedrooms, um, four baths total. So that's two baths in the three bedroom and then one bath each for the one bedrooms. It's about 2,400 square feet. A lot is decent size, almost 10,000 square foot there. Um, it's a garage with three, uh, three spaces in the garage, which is nice. Built in 1950, pretty typical for the area. It's a three unit and this is just a regular sale. Um, so this one, you know, we can scroll down. <clears throat> a lot of, some listings will actually have the numbers actually in it. Um, others you'll have to do a little digging. That's what we had to do on this one. We had to get some some information on what some of the expenses were, what's you know what we could find. Others we estimated through my property management company um, and just our experience with managing these properties as well as helping people buy and sell them. Um, and the income, we were able to get that information from the agent. So it's a little bit about the listing itself. Let's dig into the actual analysis. Uh, so here is the spreadsheet we use. Um, we're gonna go boom, right here. This is the spreadsheet that we use to analyze these properties. If you've seen any of my other videos, this will look familiar to you. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is, so this is the uh, spreadsheet that we use to analyze properties. If you've seen any of my other videos, you will recognize it. So <clears throat> let's go in here. We're going to obviously start with the price. Price on this one's nine ninety five. We're going to say thirty percent down. That's in this case we're able to put a little bit less down than usual, and, and it all depends on your comfort level. Um, at the the current rents, you're going to be in a negative cash flow. So it depends how you want where you want to be. You know, from the start. You know, some clients 
I've got a client that would buy something like this, only put 30% down because she knows she's going to fix it up and she's going to and be able to raise the rents. And at 30%, she's going to be able to get a, a, enough of a return on it or, you know, to break even or to cover a cost where she can, you know, get the tax benefits and the appreciation long-term and basically leverage that down payment as, as much as possible. Um, others I have, well, they're, they're going to want to break even right from the beginning. Um, and with rents this low, you're going to have to put a pretty good amount down. Um, so it just all depends on your comfort level. And really, that's why this, this specific spreadsheet, you know, it's good. It's going to be different for everybody. So that's why we should have what I call a strategy session, sit down and say, okay, on this a property like this, what's your comfort level? You know, here's where we can get rents to in the near future. Here's where we can get rents to, you know, a few years down the road. Where do you want to be on that? What type of return you're looking for? Things like that. We all plays into this. Um, and so at the moment, you know, we're just throwing in 7.25 on the rate and 5% appreciation projected moving forward. Um, this one, you know, this is where we would probably, and I don't have numbers on this, but this one needs some, going to need a little bit of work. So there's going to be some rehab that we'd have to put in here. Um, that would play into the the overall return moving forward. <clears throat> For now, I'm going to leave that, that part out, but we'll just see, look at the numbers on this, you know, how it is at the moment. Um, so section four, we go down here. These are the unit, this is the unit mix. Rents currently are low. So this is where, you know, market rent, you can see there's a lot of upside. Like I said, in this part up here, you know, I'm going to just put, throw in a number. So that's going to figure in, you know, the cash needed, which is this down payment plus, you know, extra. So that's the number your return on investment is going to be used from. Not just your down payment. You got to figure out the money you're going to put into it. <clears throat> so it's you know, 50000 into a property like this is going to go a long ways, you know, a rental property. Um, we've got great contractors that, can, that are really reasonable. Um, so the number of units, we went through the unit mix. You can see this goes with some work. You're going to, you know, add 3000 a month. That's going to make a big jump in, in the return and really the value, you know, we base these off of, you know, the, the numbers, uh, income property, four units and below, you don't see it as much. If you're in five units and above and you're, you're every bit you add to the rent. Is a, is, is a direct increase to the value. Um, we don't we don't see that quite as much. Of course, it's if it's getting more rent, it's gonna be worth more, just how it is, but it's it's not as tied to the, the numbers um, in that case. So section five, the, uh, you know, the increases, we think, you know, vacancy rate, it's, it's occupied. So no vacancy in the first year. Uh, and then we think, you know, still it's gonna maintain being pretty low, 3% for the next couple of years. The rental market's strong. Income, we think the income, you know, probably on a low side is 5%. We'll be able to raise it every year. Expenses usually don't go up as much as income, um, but we still put 5% in there. We're conservative, do a little bit lower projections on the income, a little bit higher on the expenses. So in the end, it's it's hopefully better than, than even expected. Um, and then property taxes increasing as well. So then we go through the, the operating expenses, what we could get from the seller, what we know um, from managing other properties like this in the area, all of that that we throw in there. No other special notes on that. <clears throat> so just going back, you know, I, I always, in these videos, I talk about, you know, disclosures, disclaimers, you know, none of these numbers are guaranteed, all, all these projections, anything can change. You know, we need to verify as much as we can but there's, there's no guarantee on what is going to happen in the future. We just don't have control over that. Okay, and so now we are in the analysis part of it. So we input everything on the one screen and this is what we call the APOD, the Annual Property Operating Data Sheet. And this is where all the numbers feed into that we put on the input page. Um, and just a note, summary of the investment, there's you know purchase price and different ratios and things we, we use to analyze properties, uh, formulas. And I, I, in one of my previous videos, someone made a good point that cap rate isn't really relevant on four units and below. It's, it usually is for um, 
the commercial property or you know multifamily of higher units and it's in here because we use a spreadsheet for you know as many units as you want to go up to so on on really large properties so it's it's in here just it's there there's a number of reasons you know not it's not all that accurate it's uh, people most of the comps you know the, per, the comment the person made is that most of the comps don't have an accurate cap rate so can't really use it you can't really you know comp something out using it and the reason that we don't have a lot of cap rates on smaller properties is because cap rates are based off of the expenses they're based off the net operating income but to get the net operating income you got to have all the expenses and they got to be accurate you know in smaller properties mom and pop owners or you know even if it's managed sometimes they don't always have all the expenses they don't have accurate expenses and so it's hard to say oh this cap rate uh, you know this is the cap rate on on the specific property and to do it consistently to where we can actually use that as a comp source um, gross rent multiplier is another one we use and that's just basically if you're not familiar with that it's it's a multiplier if you have the, the amount of rent and you multiply it times the multiplier of the general area, then that's how you get uh, what the projected value could be. Or if you're, you have the, the value and you have the price and you have the rents, you know, you divide the, the price by the rent and that gives you a multiplier. And you can see, is that, is that consistent with other multipliers in the area? It's really just a just a ballpark, um, but it, it does give you at least a, an idea if you're in the right range. <clears throat> okay, so if you've seen these before, this will look familiar, but we're looking at the income section here, um, pulled over from the previous page. You got, we got the expenses, um, value targets, those you know with the cap rate and GRM, we, we, we just leave that out for now. Assumptions, these are the assumptions that, you know, first three years, the, the zero and then three and three averages out, um, pulls out, pulled out from the free, previous page as well, and all this as well. So the, the annual operations number seven is where we really want to dig into. Um, and that's what we're looking at. Um, you've got the current and the market. So currently income is low. It's occupied though, so there's no vacancy. This is the income and operating expenses. And what I, I say is if you're in the 33 to 35% range on expenses, you're probably in the right ballpark. If you're high, that's because income is probably low, and that's where, where we are there. Um, and then you can see on the market, as, once you maximize that income, expenses your expenses don't really go up a lot. Um, and if you get things where there's not as many repairs, there's you know it's actually running better, you might your expenses might even go down. But it's the money you put into it that gets you up to that point. So that's why this expense percentage is a little bit lower. Um, and then you get the net operating income. You got the gross scheduled income. You take out the vacancy that gives you the gross operating income. Take out the expenses that gives you the net operating income. And then you have the basically what we call the spendable, basically your cash flow, your pre-tax cash flow, um, pre-principal pay down cash flow. So we say pre-tax because this is the cash flow you get. This in this case it's a loss, but once it hits market, you know, with a small down payment like it was, there is a little profit projected, expected with no guarantee, of course. Um, so you've got a little bit of profit that we're, we're projecting. And so you're, you're going to, it's going to be income to you based on your tax situation. You know, what, what's, what are you going to pay on in taxes? So then we take, well, this principal pay down because, you know, with the, the debt service, we're not just, we're paying principal. So you're paying the loan amount down. So you are creating equity out of that the principal pay down for this month is 67 for this year. 6741 in the first year. So your your cash flow, you actually have to add that you, you add that back in to show what you've gained for the year. It's that's on paper as it's just principal pay down, but you you're gaining that equity. Um, unless values are going down then then that is more money in your you know, your pocket, you know, virtually kind of until on paper until you actually sell it at some point. And then you can see here with this down payment, it does uh, cash flowing a little bit, and with your if you figure in the principal pay down, then that's what you're you're gaining for the year. <clears throat> All right, so again, this part over here, we're figuring in the profit. We just kind of you know, mostly focus on this number here. The IRR is a whole other station, but these are the returns on 
this profit that you're gaining. And again, everything is projected. There's no guarantee on these numbers, but based on what we're putting in with some appreciation, and once you get it to market, some of the cash flow in the first year, you combine those two together, you're gonna, if you sold at the end of year one, that should be your profit. Now you're gonna have expenses for selling it. So that's why the profit isn't as much, you know, it's gonna go up in value, say it goes up, um, you know, 70, 80,000 plus some of the principal pay down and, and a little bit of cash flow. Uh, so you've got that, but you've got, you know, cost of selling a property. Then you, you bump that up end of year four, six, eight, 10. So you're, you're seeing, okay, profit at the end, uh, 10 years down the road, what am I gonna make with all the appreciation and all the cash flow over time with projecting that rents are gonna go up, you know, the, the, the value is gonna go up, values go up and down over the years. So, you know, we don't know what will happen, but if values go up, uh, what we're projecting, and that's why we're not projecting, you know, 10 or 15%, because that's just not realistic. But eight to 10% is, is very realistic on an annual basis here on normal years. And then you're gonna have years where it's not as much or might even be a, a negative. Uh, the years that are down aren't usually more than one or two. So you're gonna have more years going up than you are down. So we average that out. Um, so over 10 years, that's what we're, we're projecting. Um, and basically that gives you over that lifetime an average of almost 13% of a return if it hits those numbers, which you know, we would expect that it would. All right, so what um, I did mention earlier that I will talk about uh, a giveaway and what I have a spreadsheet very similar to this one that I call kind of the light version of this because this you know, actually has you know, a number of tabs that we don't even get into on here. <clears throat> but there's a lot of different things that you can that go into figuring these numbers and, and using the inputs to, to look at other projections and other things and, and really breaking it down annually and, and getting really detailed. But um, if you want to just look at something where, you know, I can put in the price down payment or expenses, uh, what's that give me? What, what am I looking at as cash flow? What am I looking at as a return on what I'm putting into it? I do have a light version. Um, so go ahead and just make a comment here that you'd like to get that and, and we can get a copy of that over to you. But otherwise, that's it for today. So thanks for joining. This is Ben Larson with the Larson Real Estate Group. I also have a property management company with PL Management. Um, we went over, this is a, a Lomita three unit um, value add type property. You know, there's, there's I don't know there's gonna be another one, you know, just like this, but this gives you a little bit of an idea of what, what something like this might look like, what the numbers might look like. Um, and as values go up, you know, we're gonna see these, these numbers Rents will go up, values are going up, um, you know, the numbers will be different. So we'll just look at, as things come up, if you if you want to find an investment property, we'll look at each specific property case by case and see, see what it takes. So that's all for today. Thanks for joining.